Every year, the MSBA selects 15 fellows to develop and implement a public service project in their community and, um, and also teach them leadership skills and grooms us to be leaders in the community. This year, we chose to talk about cyberbullying. So today we were at Towson High School. We did a presentation for about 200 high school students from 9th through 12th grade. We're here as part of the Leadership Academy through the Maryland State Bar Association. So in terms of statistics, nearly one in three students have experienced cyberbullying. So I am going to talk to you guys about uh, these, four, these four young students who unfortunately took their lives um, due to being cyberbullied. And how does it affect us? Well, if you are a victim of cyberbullying, and I hope you know no one is, you know there are things that you can now do about it. You have certain rights, and you know if you are the one who's bullying someone, there are criminal penalties. Uh, these are adult penalties, 18 and over. For those of you who are seniors and you're 18, well, these apply to you. Everyone else, you would fall in the juvenile system. And we're very excited this year to come up with something like cyberbullying because it's, it's definitely an issue that's facing young adults throughout this country right now and it's something that we felt was really important to talk to students in Maryland to kind of bring this to, to the forefront of their minds. Important is an understatement when it comes to uh, cyberbullying awareness for the students. My name is Ryan Derenberger. I'm an English and journalism teacher here at Walt Whitman High School. Um, so the presentation's uh, main purpose was to uh, identify Grace's Law by name, Grace was 15 years old. She was actually a high school student in Howard County, so she's from our state. At first she was bullied offline, and then the bullying went place online on Twitter, and they bullied her there. And unfortunately, she also took her own life. And uh, in 2013, uh, Grace's mom fought really hard and worked with our lawmakers in Annapolis to get a law on the books that protects people like Grace, that protects um, everyone, protects kids like you guys. Uh, itemize the various aspects of it and make sure that the students can apply them to different scenarios. So these are four magic words. This is how you can actually determine that you're violating the law. The, uh, the kind of uh, role-playing and um, exemplifying specifically went over really well with the students. I actually had no clue about Grace's Law. I always knew that um, it's, a, it's like always like a really bad thing to do, but I didn't know how bad the consequences are and I think if people knew that it wouldn't be as you know um, common. Like cyberbullying it's it's very different whether it's like a, someone saying something playful or it's actually like intent to hurt so um, there's a big line drawn there between play and hurting so I think that that was cleared up today in the presentation. Um, essentially it's using um, you know the internet to um, bully someone else can't do that. That's what the law says. You can't say things that will make people be really, really upset. And I'm not just talking like, oh, boo-hoo, I'm gonna, you know, cry a few tears and be over it. I'm talking, you know, you don't feel like going to school, you, um, you know, start getting depressed, um, you're no longer interested in your regular activities, um, things of that nature. So there's a common theme that you're going to hear today. The first one is intent. Say intent. Um, I just thought it was really really good. I think I really appreciated them coming out and taking time to inform all of us. Thank you for helping. Um, it's too important not to discuss. Um, our students need to know that they're in safe spaces. Um, they need to know that they're supported, uh, not just by the adults in their lives, but also their peers. So when cyberbullying does pop up, um, we want to make sure that the students know there's help available. 